Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, I've got Intel's 12th gen release date, two new AMD GPUs, Intel's new CPUs are huge power hogs, and we finally get to see Intel's upcoming high performance GPUs. Okay, it's news time man. First up for today, it looks like Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs are expected even sooner than we first thought. The story originally comes from a report by WCCF Tech, where their sources claim that the new CPUs are set for release this November. Earlier rumors claim that Intel planned the announcement in September with the release possibly by the end of the year. Now, obviously November is towards the end of the year, but it would literally mean that Intel is planning to release a new architecture just eight months after their last release. Talk about a quick launch. Either way, this gives us a better time frame for when we can expect these, and it's nice to know that Intel is actually sticking to their original release schedule. Let's just hope it doesn't get delayed sometime between now and November. I definitely love on-time launches. But not as much as I love listening to a good book with today's sponsor, Audible, today's leading provider of audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. And that leading provider part means you're always able to find the perfect title, whether it's finance, technology, sci-fi, comedy, and so much more. There's thousands of audiobooks to discover, like this complete guide for becoming a software developer. Plus, with their new Audible's Plus catalog, you get tons of audiobooks to listen to and podcasts to follow. And all of it is included with your subscription. Oh, and you get to download the titles so you can listen offline. The best part is that you can try Audible for free today by visiting audible.com slash gamermeld or text gamermeld to 500-500 today. Next up, we're finally starting to get specs and performance numbers for AMD's upcoming RX 6600 series of GPUs. Starting things off, the new cards were spotted in an EEC filing by ASRock, and that may not sound all that interesting considering they filed one just a few months ago. Well, it is because this new filing changes things up. In the original filing, the 6600 XT came with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6, but in the new filing, it shows both the 6600 XT and non-XT models come with just 8 gigabytes. Basically, ASRock either guessed before or there's been a change of plans. Regardless, 8 gigabytes definitely makes sense, and according to a new post from Malika on Chipel's forums, that does look to be accurate. Not only that, but according to the leaker, both parts are made from AMD's Navi 23, with the 6600 XT getting 2048 stream processors. The non-XT part, on the other hand, comes with 1792. As for performance, the 6600 XT allegedly gets a score of 9439 in Time Spy, while the non-XT model gets 7805. And according to video cards, that puts them in line with the 5700 and 5700 XT GPUs. Of course, as always in 2021, whether you'll actually be able to buy one is a huge question. Next up, Intel has officially launched their 6 and 8 core Tiger Lake H CPUs. Of course, Intel already released their Tiger Lake H CPUs at CES, but those only went up to 4 cores. And sure, the company technically has 8 core mobile parts, but those are based on the same 14 nanometer process that we've seen time and time again. Luckily, the company did confirm that they had more Tiger Lake H CPUs coming with up to 8 cores. And they're finally here! As you can see, the parts range from 6 to 8 cores, and actually get up to a very impressive 5 GHz across a maximum of 2 cores. And I was really impressed, until I saw one big issue. As you can see, they specifically mention the base frequency while at 45 watts. Well, according to Tom's hardware, the base mode can get up to a whopping 107 watts and up to 135 watts under heavy load. And that's just like Intel's 10980HK, except it was able to get to 5.3 GHz. So for the same power draw, Intel's new 10 nanometer Superfin isn't able to get the same clocks as their 14 nanometer process. And sure, there is an IPC increase, but it almost feels like Ice Lake again. You can see that the base clock is 200 MHz higher at the same TDP, but let's just say this definitely makes me a bit disappointed. Luckily, according to their benchmarks, it does get a nice boost against their last-gen parts. With that said, because Intel didn't mention the CPU's TDPs when comparing their parts to AMD's, I definitely wait for third-party reviews. 
And lastly for today, we finally get to see a couple of Intel's upcoming high performance GPUs, as well as some leaked specs. And things are fairly impressive, but also a bit worrisome. The story originally comes from Igor's lab, who, as I've said in the past, is typically very accurate when it comes to leaks. Either way, the new report originally comes from internal slides by Intel, but to protect his source, Igor didn't publish the actual slides, but he does give us all the information. Starting things off, these parts come from Intel's XE HP architecture that's targeting data center and AI applications, and these are codenamed Arctic Sound. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that Intel's HP parts are set to use up to four tiles. Think of tiles like AMD's chiplets and their CPUs, which allow for easily scalable parts. Of course, Intel tried to make fun of AMD's glue before ultimately gluing their parts together, but that's okay. Anyway, Igor shared two upcoming GPUs, one with one tile and one with two. As you can see, the single tile GPU does look pretty nice, though arguably a bit basic. Then the dual tile card doesn't show a PCI Express slot, but these are just early renders, of course. Either way, when it comes to the specs, the single tile cards come with 16GB of HBM 2E memory and 384E use, or 3072 cores. Now, the weird part is that it comes with 512 EUs, but only 384 are activated. Not only that, but the TDP of 150 watts is lower than what you would expect, given what we know of the consumer parts. And that tells us the clocks are likely lower. Moving on to the two-tile part, it comes with 32GB of HBM 2E memory and 480 EUs per tile, which makes for a total of 7,680 cores. Once again, each tile has a total of 512 EUs per tile, yet only 480 are activated. Of course, you may have noticed that Intel promised up to four-tile GPUs, but according to Igor, those aren't here, and it doesn't sound like they're coming later either. I'd like to think that the four tile parts have the full 512 EUs activated and they're just coming later, but I'm really not sure. If they don't, then Intel is having some serious issues with their GPUs, and the fact that Igor is even doubting Raja Kaduri's future with Intel, things clearly aren't looking good at all. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs or are you kind of disappointed in those Tiger Lake H CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.